Hello again, everybody. David Clary, Ethan Eubanks live here at Halls High School, getting set for Oak Ridge High School baseball. The Wildcats taking on the Halls Red Devils in the second ball game of the series. The Wildcats winning last night's game 8-4 to four at Bobby Hopkins Field. Taking a look at the starting lineups, first off for the Halls Red Devils, leading things off and playing second base will be Colby Comaparto. I think I said that wrong. Batting second will be the center fielder, Cooper Faust. Batting third will be the catcher, Amari Lethko. Batting fourth will be the right fielder, Seth Perry. Batting fifth will be the shortstop, Landon Wells. Batting sixth will be the first baseman, Cash Centel. Batting seventh will be the third baseman, Hayden Housewright. Batting eighth will be the left fielder, Jackson Kitts. And batting ninth will be the designated hitter, Parker Meese. He'll be hitting for Dade Young, who will be pitching today for the Halls Red Devils. Looking at the starting lineups for the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats, another lineup change for the Wildcats. Parker Free will be leading things off. He'll be playing catcher today. Batting second will be Mikey Teasley. Mikey will be playing shortstop. Batting third will be the first baseman, Peyton Witter. Batting fourth will be Cam Welch. Cam will be the pitcher in tonight's ball game. Batting fifth will be the left fielder, Cy Stevens. Batting sixth will be the right fielder, Richie Ferreira. Batting seventh will be Warren East. Warren will be playing center field for the Wildcats. Batting eighth will be Kyron Welch. He'll be playing third base for Oak Ridge. And batting ninth will be the designated hitter. That'll be Alex Franklin. Alex will be hitting today for the second baseman, Carson Fagan. The umpires are meeting at home plate. We have a unique setup here at Halls. We're directly behind the plate. There really wasn't any other place to set the camera up and do the broadcast. So we're right behind the plate. The umpire's going to hear me loud and clear, which means most likely we'll only have about a half a game, and I'll be thrown out and heading to the parking lot after that. As we're just moments away from the National Anthem, the exchange of the cards, the lineup cards taking place, Wildcats tomorrow, no game. One of the rare Wednesdays in the last month or so that we haven't had a ball game. The We will have the Covering the Bases show. And that'll be a live interview show on BBB Communications Channel 1086. We'll also stream it live on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. And we'll hope you'll tune in for that tomorrow at 7 o'clock, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock as uh, we get set for this ball game here. And I heard Coach Free, he just told the umpire, you're going to be able to hear, you are going to be able to hear uh, the commentator back there. And he pointed back at me, and the umpires turned around and smiled. So I've got a reputation that precedes me, as Coach Free has just warned the umpires behind the plate. Hall's wearing their all-white jerseys with blue, white pants, that is, blue jerseys with white numerals with a little red. The Wildcats wearing their predominantly gray jerseys, gray jersey and gray pants with cardinal numerals. It's Oak Ridge and Halls looking at the dimensions of the stadium. The field, it's 370 to dead center. It is 300 to right field and 300 to left field. So short on the uh, foul poles to the power alleys, it's 340 in right, 340 in left. They've really made some great improvements on this field over the years, and we look forward to another exciting ball game live here from Halls High School. Wildcats on Thursday will be hosting the Bearden Bulldogs, then the Wildcats next week will conclude their regular season with a full slate of ball games, and they will start district play in the first week of May. Right now, the Wildcats are sitting at second place in the district. The Wildcats, as Coach Free told me last night after the ball game, hoping to uh, you know, sweep the rest of their district games. They have this one tonight. They have the makeup ball game Monday at 6 o'clock against the Powell Panthers, weather, weather permitting at Powell High School. We are live here at Halls High School. The concession stand is open. We have cleared out the middle section of the bleachers. I think they think I'm obnoxious, and that uh, is okay with me because the Halls people are down on the first base side. The Oak Ridge people are to my left and down below. It's Oak Ridge and Halls. We're going to take a break. I'm going to turn off the mics for a few moments, and we'll send it 
once again back, and we'll come back with the first pitch of the ball game. It'll be Parker Free, Mikey Teasley, and Peyton Winter to lead things off. But we'll have the national anthem as well. We're about to have the ceremonial first pitch. I'm sorry I didn't hear the PA announcer to tell me who exactly who it is, but he is about to throw the first pitch out. We'll be back to Halls with the broadcast in a moment. So our national anthem here from Halls High School getting set for Oak Ridge High School baseball. The Wildcats taking on the Halls Red Devils for the second time in two days. As I mentioned earlier, the Wildcats winning the first game by a final score of 8-4. to four. That was the final score of the ball game on Monday. As the two teams are getting ready, pitching for the Halls Red Devils today is Dade Young, and he is warming up. He is a right-hander, and he'll be – facing Parker free to start the ball game. And we'll get the uh, ball game underway. As I mentioned, I, I saw a little snicker with the umpires. I guess my, like I said before, my reputation is out there about my um, love for officials and umpires. Most of the time, in fact, 99% of the time, they do a great job with the exception of the guy up in Johnson City on Saturday. Free. Teasley, Witter, Welch, Stevens, Ferreira, Faust, uh, East, Welch, and Franklin are the scheduled nine in the Travis Free lineup. And we're just moments away from Oak Ridge High School baseball. The long, the long throw down to second base, and we are about to get set from Halls High School. We appreciate all of you watching our broadcast wherever you might be. The game was originally scheduled for 5.30, but uh, they moved it uh, to allow the JV to play first as Parker Free leads things off. Parker is hit all over the lineup. I'm kind of curious to see what this 
what this picture is going to look like directly behind the plate. You're going to get a bird's eye view of the pitcher and the batter, but not so much of the outfield as that pitch is down low a ball, one ball and no strikes. So we are underway here at Halls, home of the Red Devils. Remember when they used to play at the high school? Pitches hit foul off the screen to the right, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. They used to play, and one of the uh, obstructions in the outfield was a, was a building that protruded out in center field. So center field was actually the shorter of the fields. To left and right was deeper, and they had because the building stuck out in center field. You can still see it. That's where their softball team plays now. Pitch to Parker is once again hit almost in the same place off the netting to the right, and Parker behind in the count, one ball and two strikes. Dade Young is a right-handed throwing pitcher for the Red Devils. This is a district ball game. Pitch to Parker, hit into the shortstop's, actually the second baseman's hand, and that is out number one. I don't know, I was screened a bit, and that is out number one here in the first inning. Batter now will be the Wildcats shortstop, Mikey Teasley. Mikey was three for three yesterday with a walk. Also had a really good day on the mound, struck out 12 Red Devils before giving way to Cy Stevens. And the pitch to him is a ball. One ball and no strikes. Teasley. He's a right-handed hitting sophomore. Ethan Eubanks doing camera work for us today, and that pitch is inside and tight, and the count is now two balls and no strikes. Kind of eager to find out from people who are watching what this picture looks like from behind the plate. Hopefully the netting is not in the way as the pitch is hit foul. And out of play over towards the elementary school and off the aluminum roof, and the count is two and one. Teasley stands in, Carolina blue cleats. The pitch to him is up high and inside, and the count is three balls and one strike. Ethan, I heard you got an offer today. We'll talk about that in a minute. As Mikey steps back in, three balls, one strike, one out, nobody aboard. First inning, Paul's ripped to left. That's going to be a base hit. And it'll be a single for Mikey Teasley and his Good work at the plate continues. So, Ethan Eubanks, you went up to EKU today? I did. And you got an offer to play football? I did. Congratulations. I think, thank you. He, he's, he speaks so much. I mean, he, he's just a jabber box. As Peyton Witter stands in for the Wildcats, Peyton hitting from the right side. He'll be playing first base today. Mikey takes his lead off of first. The pitch to him is cut on a missed. And the count is no balls and one strike. Peyton will be followed by Cam Welch. He'll be the pitcher in today's ball game for the Wildcats. Mikey takes his lead off of first. One strike the count on the junior winner. The pitch to him, that's way up high. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. Sometimes wonder what these opposing teams think when we just kind of set up in the stands and broadcast. I try not to be obnoxious when we're so close to them. As the runners go in, the pitch is hit in the air. Shallow left field. The shortstop back, and he can't make the play. And they might get a forced play at second. He is safe. The ball just kind of dropped in no man's land between the left fielder, the center fielder, and the shortstop. And the Wildcats have runners at first and second with one out. And the batter will be the pitcher in today's game, Cameron Welch. Camden Welch, I don't know why I said Cameron. It's Camden. And I know that, Ethan. Yep. <laughs> I, I know you better than you know yourself. As Camden bats from the left side, facing the right-handed throwing, Dade Young. Runners at first and second. No score, top of the first. The pitch, that's up high. About shoulder level. I kind of like the perspective being right behind the plate. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. Not sure, Ethan, if you were able to follow the plays in the outfield or not. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That's ball two. 
Two balls and no strikes. It was high and outside, and timeout is asked for, and the catcher will wander out to speak to Dade Young. The catcher for the Red Devils is Amari Lefko. At first base, they have Cash Sintel. The second baseman is Colby Comarato. Comparato. The shortstop is Landon Wells. And Cam Welch steps back in. Two balls and no strikes. Right-handed throwing pitcher. The pitch to him is cut on a missed. And the count is two and one. I think that was intended for us, Ethan. I think it was too. An older gentleman walked by and said, go Devils. Fake back to second. And Mikey hadn't really drifted far off the bag at second. He is the lead runner for the Wildcats. At first is Peyton Witter. Two balls, one strike to Cam. Runners from third going. The pitch is hit in the air this time to normal center field. They have an opportunity for the force, but back to the bag will go Teasley, and Cam is out number two. The batter now will be the left fielder, Cy Stevens. Cy had a three-run home run yesterday for the Wildcats. Also had a double off the fence. On one hop, RBI opportunity here, but there are two outs here in the top of the first. Pitch, cut on a missed. Low pitch on the corner, and the count is 0-1. Cy told me last night, I think that was his sixth career home run at two different schools. Pitch, that's up high. And the count is one ball and one strike. We are live at Halls. Wildcats and the Red Devils. The two teams played for years and years in the same district, but then last couple of years, Halls had dropped down to 3A while the Wildcats were playing at the 4A level. But the population of the school at Halls moved back up and put them in the same classification. And like basketball, like we saw during the season, they were back in our district. One ball, one strike, nope. Once again, the pitchers are really occupied with the runners. We saw that last night to the point where the Wildcats took advantage of it, I think, as that pitch is hit foul and out of play on top of the building again. Nope, not quite. He's behind in the count, one ball and two strikes. A little bit warmer than it was at Clinton, is it not? It is very warmer. Yep. <laughs> Cy back in, one two pitch. That's up high. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. Cy Stevens will be followed by the right fielder, Richie Ferreira, but there are two outs, two on, top of the first, and a scoreless ball game. Once again, Dead Young steps off the rubber and once again, the catcher will go out to have words with him. We've kind of changed the configuration here since the last time. We used to come in on the lower side down below, kind of a, up the steps, but they make you walk all the way in from the far left field now, which they didn't used to do. We used to just come right through the gate, which is directly behind us. Kind of makes sense because most people park a little farther away so they don't get their windshield smashed in 2-2 two -two pitch cut on a miss and that is a swinging strikeout and that is out number three wildcats pick up a couple of base runners they leave them stranded we go to the bottom half of the second inning live from halls high school on our youtube channel prep radio my name is david clary along with ethan eubanks we'll be back to halls in a moment
Welcome back once again to Halls High School. We get set to play the bottom half of the first inning. Comparado will lead things off. Colby Comparado, he is the second baseman. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Cooper Faust, and then Amari Lethko. It's really the exact same lineup that we saw in last night's game. All the way down, except the pitcher is Dade Young today. Camden Welch is the pitcher for the Wildcats. Camden has a good fastball, has a good curveball. As Comparado steps in, right-handed hitter, wearing the number three, the Red Devils in there. It might look like it's black on your television screen, but it's actually a navy blue with white and red. The Wildcats in their predominantly gray and cardinal. Second baseman steps in and Cam has the sign and the pitch to the plate is looked pretty good, but called a ball and the ball count is one ball and no strikes. Parker Free is the catcher. Here's the pitch. That's low and inside. And the count is two balls and no strikes. We saw in last night's game that Mikey had a little trouble in the first inning with his control. He eventually struck out 12 Red Devils. In fact, at one point in the ball game, had eight consecutive strikeouts. That pitch is well out of the strike zone, and the count is three balls and no strikes. Comparado will be followed by Faust and Lethko, as I mentioned. Deep in the box, pitch. Called strike one on the outside corner, and the count is three and one. Defensively for the Wildcats, Peyton Witter is the first baseman. Second baseman is Carson Fagan. The shortstop is Mikey Teasley. The 3-1 pitch is strike two. Good live fastball. And the count is full, three balls and two strikes. Kai Welch is the third baseman. Cy Stevens in left, Warren East in center. Richie Ferreira in right. 3-2 pitch, hit in the air. On the infield, backing up will be Fagan, but it'll be Richie Ferreira making the catch for out number one. Ball was way high. And first, Car Carson Fagan was going back, and I thought he was the guy who was going to make the play, but then Richie called him off, and that is out number one. Better now will be the center fielder, Cooper Faust. You see what Cooper did yesterday. Cooper had a two RBI double in the ball game, walked, struck out, and reached base on a fielder's choice yesterday. First pitch, looked like a strike, but one ball, no strikes. Pitch, hit well to center field, Warren East, can't get to it, it bounces in front of him, and that is a one out single. So Cooper Faust is the first base runner aboard for the Red Devils, and the batter will be Amari Lethko, the catcher. Let's go. Let's see what he did yesterday. Looking at the book, let's go. Let's see. Had an RBI double, struck out, also reached on a fielder's choice, and he was actually the last out of the ball game as he hit that ball to Alex Franklin to end the ball game. Pitch is a breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Good turnout of Halls fans down the right side. A few Oak Ridge. People scattered around both sides of the diamond. Runner at first being held on the pitch. That's high and outside. And the count is one ball and one strike. Lethko dibs, digs in once again. He's a right-handed hitter. Good lead at first. The pitch down low. Parker makes a nice stop. And the count is two balls and one strike. Let's go will be followed by Seth Perry in the Red Devil lineup. I noticed last night, let go wearing what looks like a hood on his jersey as that pitch is hit in the air to center field. Warren East should make the play right in his tracks and he does for out number two. High fly ball out, but the, to the deepest part of the park. Seth Perry is the batter now. Seth is looking at my writing, batting in the number four spot. He is the right fielder for the Red Devils. 
Runner at first, the Wildcats had a couple base runners in the top of the inning, weren't able to score. Red Devils down to their final out in the first. Pitch, low and outside, one ball and no strikes. Perry, another right-handed batter. He's deep in the box once again. The pitch to him. Breaking pitch in there for a called strike. And the count is even. One ball, one strike. Runner at first base. A single by Cooper Faust. And he takes his lead off of first. One ball, one strike. Camden Welch to the plate. Hit hard, but foul. Almost took out one of the TV camera guys. You know, I, I kind of kidded Peyton earlier that he needed to go out on the field. But I think that's a good reason why you don't. <laughs> because you might catch one right between the, the eyes, the teeth, the nose. That yeah, would mess up your face before you go off to college there, Ethan. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The runner going, the pitch, cut on a miss. And that's a swinging strikeout. And that is out number three. First strike out of the ball game for Camden Welch. We go to the second inning. The Wildcats will have Ferreira, East, and Welch. Kyron Welch, the scheduled three. We'll be back to Halls in a moment. Scroll this game here from Halls High School. David Clary back here along with Ethan Eubanks, live from Halls High School. Actually, not high school. We're actually at the elementary school. We're on Halls' home field, the Bob Polston Field, named after their longtime coach. As Richie Ferreira steps in for the Wildcats. Richie had two hits yesterday, two singles in the ball game at Bobby Hopkins in Oak Ridge. And the pitch is hit on the ground, right side, and through into right field. Another solid single and a good start for the Wildcats here in the second inning. Ball just got under the glove of the second baseman, and that is the third hit of the ball game against Dade Young. And the batter now will be Warren East. Warren was hitting in the leadoff spot yesterday, had a rough day, and he's kind of moved down on the order. He is really been really good in the nine hole this year. Early in the season, he batted first in the Wildcat lineup. And obviously, uh, you know, when Cade, Caden Black obviously kind of kind of held down that uh, that position for the last three years. And and uh, when he came back, you know, Caden left, you know, started right where he left off last year, hit after hit, walk after walk, steal after steal, run after run. And Warren has moved down to the nine spot where he really has flourished. Throw over to first and Richie back on his stomach. One ball, no strikes the count on the scoreboard to Warren East. Warren will be followed by Kyron Welch. Warren is a freshman, right-handed hitter. Two home runs to his credit this season, including one Friday night. Richie once again draws the throw and easily back to the bag he goes. As I I say a lot, that pitch is way up high. As I say a lot, as I look at Warren closer than I normally am to him, he is just not a big guy. And he's on, well, he's only a freshman, but I mean, where the power comes from, you know, is, is just unbelievable as he takes one up high. And on the scoreboard, the count 
is three balls and no strikes. Dade Young, the pitcher for the Red Devils. Got a runner first to pitch. That's up high, and that's ball four. So the Wildcats have two on. They had two on in the first, failed to score. And the batter now will be Kyron Welch. Kyron's playing third base for the Wildcats. Kyron represents the only senior. Actually, no, that's not true. Alex Franklin is another senior in the lineup for the Wildcats. As Coach Will Maddox goes out to grab, I guess, Richie's cap or something. I can't quite see. Actually, his, his armband. As Kyron steps in, Kyron is playing third, as I mentioned. He'll be followed by Alex Franklin in the Oak Ridge lineup. Right-handed hitter. He is a senior. So the two seniors in the lineup are hitting eighth and ninth for the Wildcats. The Wildcats also have what appears to be, looks like, two freshmen in the ball game and multiple sophomores and a couple juniors as well. Another conversation between the catcher, Lethgo, and his pitcher, Dade Young. Runners at first and second, no count as of yet on Welch. Squares to bunt, does. Down the third base line, that's gonna be a base hit. Here comes the throw and he is, they call him out. The Wildcats score though. Richie never stopped and came all the way around to score. A really, really nice play by Richie Ferreira. He got the green light. The ball was perfectly bunted up the line. I thought Kyron was gonna beat it out and Richie just kept on coming around and he scores the first run of the ball game and Oak Ridge leads it by a score of one to nothing. Wildcats also have a runner at third now. RBI for Welch and Alex Franklin hits the ball well and it's gonna be caught by the right fielder tagging up and coming in. It's gonna be close. He is safe. He is safe. And the Wildcats lead by a score of two to nothing on the sacrifice fly RBI by Alex Franklin in the Wildcats lead the Red Devils by a score of two to nothing. Good start for the Wildcats. Two runs here in the second inning and back to the top of the order we go to Parker Free. The freshman steps in, he hits the ball foul off the screen once again. He lined out to start the ball game in the first inning. Right-handed hitter, as I mentioned, he's a freshman. He'll be followed by Mikey Teasley, but there are two outs, two in. The Wildcats on top of the Red Devils. Pitch, breaking pitch, low. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. Pitch, almost hitting. Goes back to the backstop here, which is not too far away. It's tracked down by the umpire. Mikey tried to be polite and helpful. Umpire got there before him. The count is two balls and one strike. Two in, the Wildcats with three hits already in the ball game. Pitch to Parker, down low, that is ball three. Mikey Teasley, four hits so far against the Red Devils. Three yesterday at a single in the first inning and he is on deck for the Wildcats, but there are two outs. It's a district ball game. As I mentioned, Halls and Oak Ridge used to be in the same district for many years. It's Parker hits the ball hard to right, but right to the right fielder, and the catch is made out there by Seth Perry, and that is out number three. But a very productive top half of the second inning. The Wildcats score two times. They do it by the benefit of a base hit by Richie Ferreira, a walk to Warren East, sacrifice bunt, and RBI for Kyron Welch, and a sacrifice fly by Alex Franklin. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. Live from Halls High School, it's the Wildcats two and the Red Devils nothing. And we'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back once again to Halls High School. Leading things off will be Landon Wills. He's playing shortstop for the Red Devils today. He'll be followed by Cash Centel, the first baseman, and Hayden Houseright, who is playing third for Halls. Camden Welch begins his second inning of work. Gave up a single to Faust, but that's it. As that breaking pitch comes in a little bit low, and the count is 1-0. Two to nothing, Wildcats. Oak Ridge has out hit the Red Devils 3-1 as we start play in the bottom of the second. Cut on a missed, evens the count at one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike. The pitch, a little bit low. And the count is two balls and one strike. Camden comes to the plate, way inside, and the count is three balls and one strike. Parker free with the sign, 3-1 pitch. Cut on a missed. Full count again, three balls and two strikes. That's ball four, it's up high, and a good start for the Red Devils as they have their leadoff man aboard in the second inning. And the batter now will be Cash Centel. See what Cash did. Centel yesterday was 0 for 3 in the ball game, flew out to center, struck out looking, and popped out to the second baseman. He was 0 for 3 yesterday. Against Oak Ridge, pitch to the plate, cut on, and that's a swinging strike. Maybe, maybe even foul tipped, and the count is 0-1. Centel will be followed by House Wright, then Jackson Kitts in the Red Devil lineup. Good lead at first, the pitch, cut on a miss. Another high fastball, and he gets ahead of Centel. No balls and two strikes. Some beginning is set here at no balls, two strikes. Hit, throw over to first and back to the bag will go the runner, Landon Wells. Leadoff walk for the Red Devils. Wildcats scored two in the top of this inning to take a two to nothing lead. Centel behind in the count, 0 2. Pitch. That's way up high, and the count is 1 and 2. Both dugouts a little quiet as we start play here. One, two pitch, runner going, cut on a miss. That's a strikeout. Throw down, that is a stolen base for Landon Wells. But a swinging strikeout, and that is out number one here in the second inning, and that'll bring up House Wright. House right, swings and he misses. Good pitch there by Cam. House right yesterday, let's see, he, let's see, reached on a walk, no, actually had a single in the second inning, was walked in the fifth inning and scored a run and struck out in the sixth. There's a called strike and the count is no balls and two strikes. That was in yesterday's ball game. Won by the Wildcats, eight to four. Runner at second. Camden Welch pitching for Oak Ridge. Facing House right. He'll be followed by Jackson Kitts. 0 2 pitch. That one's outside. Not a bad pitch there. Tried to make him go fishing. He wouldn't have anything of it. And the count is 1 and 2.
Good lead at second base. Mikey comes sneaking in behind, but no throw back in that direction. Wildcats will play Bearden on Thursday, and that'll be at, I believe, at Bobby Hopkins Field. Wildcats next couple ball games on the road as that pitch is hit foul back to the screen, just barely stayed alive, and the count remains at one ball and two strikes. Question is, do you want to go to Eastern Kentucky? It's definitely an option. Good answer. One ball, two strikes. Pitch, cut on, I missed. That's another strikeout, and that is strikeout number three for Camden Welch, and that is out number two in the second inning. And the batter now will be Jackson Kitts. Jackson is playing left field again for the Red Devils. Let's see, yesterday he was one for two. He struck out looking in the second inning, had a single in the seventh, walked and scored a run in their big inning in the fifth. And that first pitch to him is a ball. One ball and no strikes the count. Number eight hitter in their lineup, runner at second still. Wildcats put two on the board in the top of the inning. Red Devils trying to dent the scoreboard in the bottom half. Cam Welch comes to the plate. Cut on a miss. He's got a really live fastball going. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. The Oak Ridge Junior Varsity was playing before this game. Halls won that game. Last time I looked at the score, it was like five to nothing. I don't know if that was the final. That pitch cut on a miss. High fastball, not able to catch up to it. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Number nine hitter, Parker Meese on deck. He's the DH for the Red Devils. Two outs, one on, one two pitch. Hit on the ground softly. Camden Welch feels it, has time, throws on the first in time for out number three. Nice play there on a soft little grounder to the pitcher. Took his time, made a good throw to Peyton Witter to retire the side. They pick up a base runner. They leave him stranded. We go to the top of the third here at Halls. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top of the Red Devils of Halls High School, two to nothing. And we'll be back on YouTube in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls, not the high school, but at the elementary school where their field is, and it's a really nice field. Uh, it's really been improved over the years, a lot of improvements as I've watched them. As I'm, I remember the old field, like I said earlier, that they used to play in, and they've done really good work on this one. Dimensions are short down the line, but pretty deep in center as that pitch to Mikey Teasley stays up high, and that is ball one. I think the sign says 370. And that's slightly bigger than Oak Ridge in center, but down the line is much shorter. Oak Ridge is 348 to left. Their left field fence is 300 down the right field line. That ball comes over the top of the net and into the Red Devil section. Everybody's okay. One ball, one strike. Mikey Teasley had a single back in the first inning. Pitch to him is down low and the count is two and one go, 
Ball is ripped deep to center, very deep to center. Ball is going to the fence, to the wall. It's off the wall. Heading towards second is Mikey Teasley. He hit it to about the deepest part of the park. Off the wall at around the 370 mark, and the Wildcats have their leadoff man aboard. And that is the fifth hit for Mikey Teasley against the Red Devils in the first two ball games. He had a single in the first. He had three hits yesterday to go along with a walk. And the Wildcats have another runner in scoring position. That ball was smoked to center field. Batter now is Peyton Witter. Peyton had a bloop single back in the first inning. Fell in no man's land. And he bats and hits the ball foul over towards the Josh Ellis Fieldhouse. And out of play. Peyton will be followed by Cam Welch. He flew out to center field back in the first inning. Runner at second, nobody out, two to nothing Wildcats. Top of the third, they've got Mikey T picked off. Pitcher's gonna try to run him down himself, now throws up high. Mikey probably could have gone back to the bag there. They really got him in between and he's gonna be tagged out. And that is the first out of the inning. So Mikey is tagged out, it's out number one, and Peyton will step in with a one strike count. <laughs> Witter hits from the right side, throws from the left side. I, I keep meaning to ask him about that, is that pitch is a called strike, floats in at the letters, and the count is 0-2. One out, nobody aboard. Pitch, a little inside this time, same pitch, just a little bit more inside. And Dade Young has a one ball, two strike count on Peyton Witter. As I mentioned, Peyton had a little bloop single back in the first. He's a right-handed hitter. The pitch to him, hit foul. Out of play, and this one will go over the top of the elementary school. And the count remains at one ball and two strikes. Ethan Eubanks doing our camera work today. Bashan couldn't make the trip. I don't know what he was doing. Couldn't make it. One-two pitch, hit well. Deep to left, but not deep enough. The left fielder in a couple steps and makes the play. Jackson Kitts out in left field, and that is the second out of the inning. Cam Welch is the batter for the Wildcats. Cam flew out to center field for the second out of the first inning. Nobody aboard, two to nothing Wildcats as Oak Ridge bats in the top of the third. Pitch inside, one ball, no strikes. Cy Stevens is on deck for the Wildcats, but Cam's got to get on base somehow. One ball, no strikes. What was a, that ball's hit hard and hits the, the throwing hand, I believe, of the second baseman. I hope he's okay. The ball was hit like a shot. And let's see if he's okay. They're gonna stop play. That'll be a, we'll give him a hit on that. It was, the ball was hit like a rocket out there. And for whatever reason, he tried to catch it with his throwing hand and they're out to look at him. And just, it's gonna be a courtesy runner in the ball game. Looks like uh, Camden w uh, Britton is gonna come into the ball game to run for Welch. Cam played a little yesterday. He came in in left field for about two batters while Cy Stevens warmed up uh, to come in and replace uh, Mikey Teasley. So Cam saw a little action yesterday, but now he's running here in the third inning. Wildcats had a double, but Mikey was picked off between second and third. And the batter will be Cy Stevens. Cy was the strikeout victim in the first inning, and that closed out the first frame. Britton takes his lead off of first. 
Not going. The pitch is a called strike at the knees on the outside half of the plate. And the count is 0-1. Cy wearing those bright shoes that we've come accustomed to see him wear. Time is asked for by the big Burley Jr. Steps back in the batter's box. No balls and one strike to him. Two outs, one on, two to nothing Oak Ridge as the Wildcats bat in the top of the third. Pitch is outside. Britton back to the bag. Did not try to go. Coach Free, obviously, if anybody knows anything about his game, he's very aggressive on the base paths. Coach Maddox whispers into the ear of the sophomore and not going. That pitch is down low, and Lithgow once again looks to first, but Cam back to the bag. Two balls, one strike, the count, according to the scoreboard. Cy Stevens, right-handed hitter. Let's see if Cam goes on this pitch. Nope, pitch is fouled. And the count is even at two balls and two strikes. So, Peyton, you almost got in trouble in Alabama? Yeah, we're being a little bit um, too far on the field. We're taking photos. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. You never come close to me because I'll stick a mic in your face. You know that, right? Throw over to first, and, and Britton is back to the bag. Had all kinds of people talking yesterday. Ethan, James, Branson, Bashan Knowles, Thomas Cox, Kevin Steen. Even Connor talked a little bit. 2-2 two -two pitch cut on a missed, and that is a strikeout, and that is the second time that Cy has gone down in this ballgame, the only two strikeouts in the ballgame for Dade Young. We go to the bottom of the third inning here from Halls. We appreciate you watching our broadcast on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. It's 2-0 Oak Ridge. We'll be back with the bottom of the inning in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls High School. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. It'll be the number nine hitter in the lineup for the Red Devils. That'll be Parker Meese. He is the designated hitter. He is hitting for the pitcher, Dade Young, today. See what Parker did yesterday. Parker actually was hit for yesterday. He played right field for the Red Devils, and I don't believe got an at-bat in the ball game, but he leads things off here in the third inning. In the First pitch from Camden Welch is up high a ball. Both teams were held scoreless in the first inning. The Wildcats dented the scoreboard with two in the second. The Red Devils trying to get on the board here in the third. Not on this pitch. The ball is hit to center field. Warren East didn't really have to move much. He went back a step like good outfielders do and then made the catch after taking a couple steps forward. And that is the first out of the third inning. Comparado, the batter. Comparado flew out to shallow right field to Richie Ferreira, who made the catch in the first inning. Comparado, see what he did yesterday. I think I mentioned that earlier. He did score a run. He struck out twice. He had a walk and a single in the ballgame yesterday, and he takes a strike from the sophomore Camden Welch. Big left-hander, curveball, good fastball. One strike pitch, hit foul back to the screen. And I got a question for you, Ethan Eubanks. If Caleb Riker was doing camera right then, what would he do? He would try to get under the bleachers. Correct. No balls and two strikes. 
Comparado back in. 0-2 pitch from Cam Welch. Cut on, foul tipped into the mid, and that is a strikeout. And that is strikeout number three, I believe, for Cam. Actually, that's number four. And the first time that Comparado has gone down swinging, that's, that is strikeout number four for Welch. And the batter will be Cooper Faust, the center fielder. Cooper had a base hit, the only hit so far for the Red Devils back in the first inning. He was stranded. Takes a breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Nobody on, two outs. Top, actually bottom of the third is where at Halls. I should know that. It's a kind of a haul out here, Ethan. Pitches. It's not really the distance. It, by the crow flies, it's not really that far. But from Oak Ridge, it's just there's no real good way to get here, especially this time of day with the traffic. As we, I've been here many times. As play is halted just for a second while the batter has words with his third base coach. There's two outs here in the third. Kind of a beautiful day here once again. There was, There is a chance for rain later on tonight, but way late tonight. I don't think it's going to be like Clinton when there was really no, virtually no rain in the forecast and we got rained on. Let me tell you, we went up to Kingsport on, on Friday in Johnson City on Saturday for a tournament, and it was the coldest rain on Friday for the doubleheader, both games. It was miserable at that, uh, at that park. It was a beautiful park, a minor league park up in Kingsport, but it rained, and it was a cold rain. Pitch is a call. Oh, man, where was that? <laughs> One ball, two strikes, the count. Two outs, nobody aboard. One ball, two strikes, the count. Cam Welch has the sign from Parker Free. Cut on and missed. And that is another strikeout for Camden Welch. And for the second consecutive inning, he has two strikeouts in the inning. He strikes out the number one and two hitters in their lineup. And that is the fifth strikeout of the ball game for the sophomore. We go to the top of the fourth inning, live from Halls on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. We appreciate all of you watching our broadcast. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see some advertisers rolling through, like the Fox Insurance Group, who's been with us since football. All of these were football and basketball sponsors. We will, um, when we get to district play, the TSSAA charges, as we say in every sport, we will need to have uh, a rights fee paid and we'll have to raise some money. So if you're a business or if you're a, just an individual who wants to see your grandkid play ball on our YouTube channel, we might be hitting you up because uh, TSSAA, they are all about their money. And hopefully we'll be able to play a lot of ball games in the postseason. And that'll cause a lot of fees to be paid to the TSSAA. We go to the top of the fourth. For the Wildcats, Richie Ferreira will be leading things off for the Wildcats. Ferreira, East, and Welch. That was the group that scored the first two runs of the ball game back in the second inning. Long throw down in a moment. We're in the fourth, two to nothing. We'll be back with the fourth inning in a moment. Richie Ferreira steps in for the Wildcats. Richie is one for one in the ball game, singled and scored a run. Good base running for him to score the first run of the ball game. On a little bump play, came all the way around from second to score, and he hits the ball foul. Off to the left side. Looks like it's going to be on top of the Oak Ridge dugout. But nope, it's going to be caught just in, in play right at the fence, and that is out number one. Just a pop foul out. Richie had two hits yesterday, had a single earlier today, but he pops out to the third baseman. That is out number one here in the fourth, and the batter will be Warren East. Warren walked and scored, takes a ball. I mentioned this earlier. It just I'm looking at him up close here, and he's just not a big guy, but, man, 
He can generate some power. 1-0 pitch. A little bit low again. Two balls and no strikes to count. We're in the fourth inning. Low scoring ball game. Yesterday's game was an 8-4 win by Oak Ridge at Oak Ridge. That pitch is up high. He's already walked once. The only walk so far issued by the Hall's pitcher, Dade Young, was to Warren East. And he's uh, behind in the count, 3-0. That pitch is a called strike. And the count is 3-1. Warren will be followed by Kyron Welch. He had a sacrifice. That pitch is up high, and that's ball four. And for the second time in the ball game, Warren East has walked. And he, the Wildcats have had base runners in every inning to this point, but have only put on the board two runs. Looking down at Coach Free, long signal. And, of course, they don't do the hand signals, the goofy gestures that they used to do for about 100 years of baseball, but now they do a little little armband with a, with a number code on it, and that's signaled to Warren at first. The pitch is high and inside, and the count is 1-0. Kyron had a sacrifice, bunt, and an RBI. Here comes Will Presley in the, in the house once again. Maybe the biggest supporter of Oak Ridge baseball at the high school, and he just said he is for sure. That pitch is a called strike. That evens the count at one ball and one strike. Will, of course, a member of the football program, receiver for the Wildcats. I think he returned an onside kick for a touchdown. Warren's going. Here comes the throw. He sails it into center field, and Warren can't go any farther as he was sliding in. But he's in scoring position, and Warren has – uh, still, Warren has a stolen base, and he's in scoring position, as I said, and a two-ball, one-strike count on Kyron Welch. Kyle will be followed in the Oak Ridge order by Alex Franklin. What's up, Michael? How you doing? Good. Right-handed hitter. Two balls, one strike. Young checks the runner at second, the pitch. Hit on the ground, in the hole, that's a base hit. Warren had to kind of slow up just a bit because he wasn't sure if the ball was going to get past the fielder, and it just got under his glove, so the Wildcats have runners on the corners with one out. That's a base hit for Kai, and the batter will be Alex Franklin. Best bunter I've seen in a while. Let's see if he tries to do it again. See how, where they play. They're going to play even with the bag at third. Alex takes a long look. It wouldn't surprise me if he lays one down right here. Right-handed hitting senior. Runners on the corners. He's going to swing. Takes one inside and perhaps low. And the count is one ball and no strikes. Another conversation between Lathgo and the Red Devil hurler. Dade Young, I keep forgetting his name. I've only said it about 400 times. That's what happens, Ethan, when you get old. It's the first thing that goes is your memory. It might be early dementia, David. It could be. You never know. Could be. You never know. One ball, no strikes, the count. Alex Franklin, senior hitter, had a single yesterday. Hits the ball deep to center field, but not too deep. It's going to be enough, I believe, to score the run. Here comes Warren. He tags. The throw comes into second. And indeed, the Wildcats have yet another run, another sacrifice fly and RBI for Alex Franklin, his second RBI of the ball game, his second sacrifice fly. And the Wildcats now lead it by a score of three to nothing as Warren East comes in to score his second run of the ball game. Three to nothing Wildcats. Batter now is Parker Free. The pitch to him is up high, a ball. One ball, no strikes, the count. Oak Ridge won yesterday, eight to four. One time in the game, I think they were up five to one. Eventually became six to four. And then the Wildcats scored a couple runs late, little insurance runs. As Parker takes one high and tight. And the count is two balls and no strikes. Parker is 0 for 2 in the ballgame. 
Runner going, the pitch hit in the right field. Great job, solid base knock for Parker and the Wildcats will have him on the corners. Once again, sliding into second goes Kai Welch and the Wildcats Parker free with a base hit. And Oak Ridge has out hit the Red Devils seven to one. Izzy Mitchell comes in, get a shot of Izzy at first. He's the courtesy runner for the Wildcats. That's Izzy. Wildcats with an RBI opportunity here is Mikey Teasley, two for two in the ball game. Had a single and a double, was picked off second. And a little conversation between Izzy and Will Maddox, maybe setting up one of those first and third plays, maybe setting up just a decoy for a first and third play. The way Mikey swings the bat, we'll see. Mikey had three hits yesterday in a walk. He has two hits today, five hits. He's five for five with a walk. And he bats with Izzy Mitchell at first. Kai Welch at third. That pitch floats outside, and the count is one ball and no strikes. Wildcats with a run in to lead the Red Devils three to nothing. Big district ball game here at Halls High School. Izzy takes a good size lead at first. I think they'll probably maybe just let him go if he wants to go. Is that pitch a beautiful pitch? Floats in there for a called strike, and the count is one and one. Rookers dugout making some noise. Izzy takes his lead, he's going, the pitch down low, and that's a stolen base for Izzy. So the Wildcats now have two in scoring position and a two ball, one strike count on Mikey Teasley. Izzy had a couple stolen bases yesterday. That's his first today. Pitch to Mikey, down low, good stop by Lethko behind the plate, and it's a three ball, one strike count. Two outs, one in, two on. As the Wildcats bat in the fourth inning in Halls. Wildcats with one more district game after tonight. The pitch to Mikey. Down low. Ball four. The bases are loaded. So Mikey draws a walk, and the bases are full of Wildcats. And the batter is Peyton Witter. Peyton is one for two in the ball game. Had a bloop single in the first inning. Flew out to left in the next frame. Batting with the bases loaded. Pitch to him. Bounces away, and here comes the Wildcats. They're going to slide. Here comes the throw, and they call him out. They call him out at the plate. Kyron Welch tagged out at home plate for the third out. The ball, they don't have a whole lot of foul territory behind the plate, and that is the call, and that is out number three. But the Wildcats do play to run to up their lead to three to nothing over the <laughs> over the Halls Red Devils. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Wildcats three, Red Devils nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls High School. The Wildcats on, well, not the high school, I keep saying that, Halls, their baseball field here at the elementary school. 
Wildcats up three to nothing. Pitch to the plate. To left go is a ball low. And the count is one ball and no strikes. Nobody on, just underway, bottom of the fourth. Three to nothing Wildcats. Camden Welch to the plate, cut on and missed. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. Lethko turned around and looked at me. I guess he can hear me. Maybe I should start calling out things to him. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's down low. Two balls and one strike. I believe he is their quarterback on their football team, or was. I think he's a senior, if I remember correctly. We used to play Halls in football. In fact, T. Higgins' very first touchdown was against the Red Devils at Halls High School. Did you know that? I did not. Uh, very few people remember that, with the exception of me, T, his family, maybe Coach Gaddis. Three balls, one strike. Camden Welch steps off the rubber. This is the number three hitter in their lineup, I do believe. It is. It'll be three, four, and five. Facing Cam, that pitch is hit, foul. Out of play, coming back over the top of us. And once again on the elementary school, and the count is full at three balls and two strikes. Three-two pitch, hit foul back to the screen once again. And the count remains full, three balls and two strikes. Parker Free with the sign. 3-2 pitch. Breaking pitch. Called. Strike. Three. Looking. Lethko tried to deke it and head on to first with a walk, but a beautiful pitch there by Camden Welch. And the Wildcats have their first out here in the fourth inning. That is strikeout number six for Cam Welch, and he throws another good breaking pitch. And the count is 0-1. Three to nothing, Wildcats. Oakers trying to sweep the Red Devils. Wildcats swept Carn, swept Campbell County. All's a little different animal, though, as that pitch is cut on and missed. And the count is 0-2. One out as we broadcast here from the bleachers directly behind the plate where the umpire, hitter, catcher, and everybody can hear me. Two-strike pitch is way up high, and the count is one ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Cut on and missed. That is strikeout number seven for Camden Welch. And for Camden, let's see, he has struck out at least two batters in the second inning, the third inning, and already here in the fourth, and there's two outs. And the batter now will be Landon Wells, the shortstop. Landon was walked to open up the second inning. No official plate appearances. Pitch to him. Fastball in there for a called strike. What I like about this, Camden is really keeping him off balance, whether with his breaking stuff or a live fastball. I don't think Wells expected the, the fastball there. He took it straight down the middle. And he swings and misses. He's at that fastball. And Camden Whale ahead. No balls and two strikes. Landon will be followed by Cash Sintel in the Red Devil lineup. Two outs, nobody aboard. Three to nothing, Oak Ridge. The pitch, that's way up high. Tried to make him swing and miss at a bad pitch out of the zone. And the count is one and two. Wind blowing very slightly here. Not, not a, really a factor at all. One ball, two strikes, the pitch, breaking pitch, hit foul. Parker tracks it down, slides, but can't get to it. And it's retrieved by pitching coach Jeremiah Ball of UVY's fame. Dobbins Bennett as his high school. One ball, two strikes. The infield and outfield remain the same for the Wildcats. One, two pitch, cut on a missed. Strikes out the side. This is kind of similar to yesterday's ball game where at one point in the game, Mikey Teasley struck out eight consecutive Red Devils. 
He ended up with 12 strikeouts in the ballgame. We go to the top of the fifth inning here at Halls. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top. Other Red Devils of Halls High School, 3 to nothing. We're on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. My name is David Cleary, along with Ethan Eubanks. Take a break. I'm going to turn off my mic because the music is playing. We'll be back for the top of the fifth in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls. The Wildcats on top of the Red Devils, three to nothing. We go to the top of the fifth inning, a very fast-moving ball game, especially compared to yesterday's ball game. Batters Peyton Witter, he was on base or batting the last time when the Wildcats were up, as uh, Wildcats had a runner thrown out at the plate, and Pitter, oh, Pitter Witter <laughs> takes a strike. Sometimes I get tongue-tied there, Ethan. I think he's talking to one of those big-time coaches. I won't bother him. Pitches up high. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the fifth inning in a three-to-nothing ball game from Halls. Peyton is one for two in the ball game with a single. Takes one down low, and the count is two and one. When we were up in Kingsport on Friday, they didn't have a scoreboard, so I had to just kind of do it from memory. And we all know that's not a very smart thing to do. 2-1 pitch, hit in the air, foul territory coming back. It's going to stay in play, but the catcher obviously didn't pick it up right away and can't make the play. I think he either thought it was going to go out of play or he just didn't pick it up. Either way, Peyton has new life here, two balls and two strikes. He's the leadoff guy in the fifth in a 5 to nothing ball game. I don't know if you like the unique view we have of Best view from behind the plate in any ball game that we've called today. 2-2 pitch about to be made. Hit foul again. Out of play to the right. Uh, and Ethan, let me tell you, I think I've told you this before. Your job is to save the camera, save the laptop. Don't worry about your body. You'll be fine. 2-2 pitch. Breaking pitch called strike three. What a really nice pitch there by... Dade Young, and that is out number one here in the fifth inning. Strikeout number two for the Halls pitcher. And the batter now will be Cam Welch. Cam flew out to center in the first inning. Picked up a hit his last plate appearance, and he takes a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. Wildcats have out hit the Red Devils seven to one in this one. Ball's ripped to left field. That's another hit. And back-to-back -back hits for the big Wildcat pitcher, and he'll be replaced on the base paths. That's a single. Solid hit to the opposite field, and the Wildcats have a one-out base runner. Batter now will be Kai Stevens. Wildcats will get uh, Camden Britton in the ballgame once again. Britton will be running for the pitcher. Sai, who had a couple of hits and a walk yesterday, is 0 for 2 in this one. Pitch to him, hit foul off the mask of either the catcher or the umpire. The count is 0 and 1. Sai hitting in the number five slot for the Wildcats. As I mentioned, he's 0 for 2 in the ballgame. A little breeze beginning to blow here. I hope that doesn't foretell of anything in the future. Side, big right-handed junior, the pitch to him, hit foul on a breaking pitch. And the count is 0-2. 
It's a good hitting background here. There's, as you can see, if you're on the on the screen, there's just green trees, mainly pines, behind the the center field wall. And they got him picked off. Oh, good call, Wildcats. The second time, Wildcats have had somebody picked off. This time it's Cam Britton. He was leaning towards second, and good throw over and a good pickoff move by the Red Devils, and that erases the base runner. And Britton is the second out of the inning. Cy will bat now with a no ball, two strike count on him. A couple strikeouts in the ball game. Trying to get on base for the first time tonight. Not on that pitch, it's outside a ball and the count is one and two. We're in the fifth inning, three to nothing Wildcats. The pitch hit well to left center field. The center fielder can't make the play. It's over his head and rolling to the fence. It'll be another double for Cy Stevens. The ball was hit, it's pretty deep out in that area of the of the park, it's 370 to dead center. It was between the 340 and 370 mark. And unfortunately, that would have scored a run. The Wildcats have had, had actually, as Coach Free told me yesterday after the ball game, a couple of base running errors, actually three guys that were retired on the base paths. And the Wildcats have had a couple today. And that ball is hit softly, and that's going to go into left field. The green light is given. Cy is coming to the plate. The airmail throw results in another run for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. That is a soft line drive base hit. The Wildcats had the had a runner at second, and the ball wasn't hit hard at all. It just barely got into the outfield, and that allowed the Wildcats to score their fourth run of the ball game and that is the second hit of the ball game for Richie Ferreira in the score Cy Stevens and the Wildcats now lead Halls by a score of four to nothing. Wildcats will have a runner at second base Richie went to second on the throw it's a single it's an RBI and the Wildcats now lead the Red Devils four to nothing. And let's see, the Halls coach looks like he's going to make a pitching change. And the uh, umpire comes over to tell us that the second baseman did a, um, a fake tag, which is awarding Oak Ridge third base. So that's the call. Thank you, Mr. Umpire. Appreciate that clarification. So the Wildcats have a runner at third. I don't know if he was telling us or telling the fans here, but – he looked at us, so I'm just, I'm just glad he told me because I just, just now noticed that Richie was at third. So the Wildcats have another runner there, and Warren East is the batter. Warren, let's see, has walked twice, has scored two runs, and has a stolen base. Pitch, cut on a missed. Good hard swing there by the freshman, wearing number 14. That, that number was worn by Rick Evans, who played baseball at Oak Ridge and was the head coach for several years. One strike pitch to Warren is down low a ball. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Richie Ferreira is the base runner at third. Just now an RBI single, a soft little single to left field, but they all count. It's a line drive in the book as that pitch is fouled at the, at the plate, and the count is one and two. Two outs. The Wildcats back-to-back -back innings where they have scored single runs. They now lead it by a score of four to nothing. They scored two in the second, one in the fourth, and one more here in the fifth. Richie's still a base runner. The Wildcats have had a runner picked off this inning. There are two outs, freshman, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Warren back in, the pitch to him, hit foul. Pitch was well inside, probably ball three, but got a good look at it. Took a weak hack at it and fouled it back to the screen. The count remains at two balls and two strikes. Four nothing Wildcats. Oak Ridge is out hit the Red Devils. Looks like 10 to one. Pitch, bounces at the plate. Good stop there by Lethko. The Red Devil catcher to keep it from going behind him. And the count is full. He's walked twice already in the ball game. 
the only walks that have been issued, with the exception of the one to Mikey's. That pitch is cut on a miss, and Warren goes down swinging. But the Wildcats put up another run on the scoreboard. They do it on an RBI single by Richie Ferreira, a two-out single, scoring Cy Stevens, who had doubled before him. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Halls. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top of the Red Devils, 4 to nothing, And we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls, the Wildcats on top four to nothing. It'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters in the Red Devil lineup. Cash Centel, Hayden Housewright, and Jackson Kitts as that ball is hit foul up the third base line. One hit so far allowed by the big sophomore for the Wildcats. And he has to go with that. Seven strikeouts to his credit. No balls and one strike. Let's see what Cash has done today. He was a strikeout victim back in the second. He hits the ball foul over on top of the roof once again. Nope, not quite. Just a little bit shy of the roof, and the count is 0-2. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning in this district ball game. And we're broadcasting live from Halls. Two-strike pitch is outside, and the count is 1-2. Ethan Eubanks doing camera work for us today. Appreciate him coming all the way out to Halls. He loves it. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Centel playing first base for the Red Devils. Breaking pitch, just a little off the plate, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. I'm not going to criticize the umpire because he did come over and tell us about why Richie was standing at third. Can't criticize him. Well, he he has his moment. There's a swinging strikeout, and that is out number one here in the fifth inning. And for Oak Ridge pitcher Camden Welch, that is strikeout number eight in the ball game for the big sophomore. Ball's hit in the air to right field, shallow. Richie Ferreira right in his tracks, makes the play. One pitch, one out as House right goes down, and that stops a streak of four consecutive strikeouts by Camden Welch. But more importantly, that is out number two. Wildcats now, let's see, facing Jackson Kitts. He kind of had a little... Soft grounder fielded by Camden in the second inning to retire the side. He grounded out to Camden Welch. He is 0 for 1 in the ballgame. one 0 pitch, cut on a miss. High heat, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Here's an interesting smell. I wonder if it's the trees that as that pitch is down low a ball. It's kind of, it, it almost smells like um, 
uh, I guess what are they called, uh, Bradford pears, actually. And But, of course, most of the trees are budding right now. A lot of pollen in the air. you have allergies, Ethan? I do. Not really? So you suffer from those? I do. What, what time of year? This time of year? When any particular tree pollen, grass, what? It's usually just this time of year. I just get a little, like, stuffy and stuff. Two balls and one strike. Pitch. That's up high. And the count is three balls and one strike. I think he's only walked one guy today. Let me see. Let me check my scorebook here. Yeah, he's only walked one today. There's a strike. And the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. He's given up, let's see, one hit to this moment. And only walked one batter. And he has struck out eight. Pitch, hit foul off to the right side. But I can tell you this for a fact. He will probably not, even if, if the Wildcats hold on and win, he will probably not come and interview with me after the ball game. He just will not do it. He just will not do it. I'm looking at his mother right now. He just will not do it. I'll, eventually, we'll get him. Three balls and two strikes. <laughs> Pitch, hit foul again. Off the netting to the right. Two outs, nobody aboard. Camden strolls back out on the hill. Peyton Witter still the first baseman. Carson Fagan is out at second. Mikey Teasley at short. Kai Welch is at third. We've got a 3-2 pitch. Once again, upcoming. Here it comes. That's the ball, and that is ball four. Down to first will go Jackson Kitts, and that is the second walk of the ball game for Camden. And with two outs in the fifth inning, the designated hitter, Parker Meese, is the batter. He is 0 for 1 in the ball game. Flew out to Warren East back in the third inning. He is hitting for the pitcher today. He's the designated hitter. Runner at first, 4 to nothing, Oak Ridge, as we play here at Halls. The pitch, breaking pitch, evidently a little outside, and the count is one ball and no strikes. Camden checks the runner, comes to the plate. Fast ball in the inside corner, evens the count at one ball and one strike. Very live fast ball that time. One ball, one strike, the pitch. That's down low, a ball. Two balls and one strike. Two outs, runner at first. That is Jackson Kitts. A two-out walk, only as I mentioned, only the second walk of the ball game for the big sophomore pitcher. Two-one pitch. That's a little high and outside, and the count is three balls and one strike. It was about this time in the ball game yesterday when Mikey started running out of gas. He was approaching 100 pitches yesterday. Camden's had a little bit better control. He's not had as many deep counts. As that ball is ripped to left. That's a base hit. It's a really nice hit, and that's the second hit of the ball game for the Halls Red Devils, and back to the top of the order we go as they have runners now at first and second. And back to the top of the order we go to Colby Comparado. Comparado is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Flew out to Richie in the first, struck out in the third. Yesterday, he had a single, a walk, and a couple of strikeouts to his credit against the Wildcats, either Mikey Teasley or Cy Stevens. Best scoring threat for the Red Devils since the first inning. Pitch is down low, and the count is 1-0. and We're in the fifth in a 4 to nothing ball game. Oak Ridge in the lead. Hall threatening with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Pitch. That stays up high right across the letters, and the count is 2-0. and He's the leadoff guy for the Red Devils. Don't want to put any more base runners on. There are two outs this timeout is asked for. Now Mikey's going to come in and talk to his fellow classmate, two sophomores, two excellent pitchers on the Oak Ridge staff. Your two best pitchers in terms of the starters, at least in the district ball games, are two sophomores, Mikey Teasley and Camden Welch. He's got two on. The Wildcats do have a four to nothing lead. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Parker free. Comes back from his stroll to talk to his sophomore pitcher. 
And here comes a 2-0 pitch once again to Comparado. That's inside, it's ball three. So all of a sudden, the control that has been excellent for Camden Welch has left him. He's got a three ball, no strike count, threatening to load the bases with two outs. The pitch, fastball, inside corner for a called strike. Good live fastball still for Cam, even late in the ball game. I don't know, let's ask Jeff how many pitches he has, if you'll ask him. How many pitches, Cam F? 81 pitches, thank you. Pitch, hit foul. Off the pole to the right. Now 82 pitches, correct, Ethan. Your math is, who is your math teacher? Oh, it was Miss Sanders. Well, she's done a really good job with you. You know, you went from 81 to 82 on the one pitch. That's good job there, Ethan. I'm proud of you. And she will be too. Pitch hit on the ground. That's a base hit. And that's going to score a run. They're going to have runners at first and second. Here comes the throw and gets by, and the Red Devils have an RBI single. And it's now 4-1. to one. Nice job of hitting. In the score is Jackson Kitts, and that is the third hit of the ball game for the Red Devils, two of them this inning, and it's 4-1. to one. Number two hitter in their lineup, the center fielder, Cooper Faust. He had a single, his first plate appearance, and a strikeout. For a while, he was the only guy with a hit for Halls until this inning when they have two now. Pitch, breaking pitch, stays up high, and the count is 1-0. He's laboring in the fifth inning, trying to get out of it. He's got two outs, but... Red Devils have put a run on the board and they're threatening for more. That pitch on the inside corner for a called strike and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Faust will be followed by Lethko, but he wants to face him in the next inning. That pitch is hit foul off the end of the bat over to the Josh Ellis Fieldhouse and the count is one ball and two strikes. Two outs, big pitch in the ball game. Cam wants to remain in it. He's Approaching 90 now in the game. One, two pitch, inside. Two balls and two strikes. Lethko is on deck for them. He is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Cooper Faust the batter. Camden Welch trying to end the fifth inning right here. Two balls, two strikes, here's the pitch. Hit again, foul, off to the right and out of play. Let me ask Jeff if his velocity is dropping a bit in the fifth inning. About 83 average, I'm told. The breaking pitch has been solid. Two balls, two strikes. 2-2 two -two pitch, hit on the ground. To the third baseman, Kai throws in time. Nice play. His brother gets the third out as he fields and throws on to Peyton Witter for the third out of the inning. But the Red Devils score a run to make it a four to one ball game as we go to the top of the sixth inning here at Halls. We are live on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. My name is David Cleary, along with Ethan Eubanks. We'll be back to Halls. Four to one, our score now. We'll be back for the sixth in a moment.
Welcome back once again to Halls, the Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top of the Red Devils. Now four to one as we go to the sixth inning. The ball is hit foul and out of play. Leading things off for the Wildcats is Kyron Welch. Let's see what Kai's done today. Kai has a sacrifice bunt, which resulted in an RBI for him. He also has a single, so officially he is one for one in the ball game. He's the leadoff man this inning. He takes ball one, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Kai hitting in the number eight slot. Pitch is down low. Two balls and no strikes. Alex Franklin is on deck for the Wildcats. As I mentioned, Kai is one for one with an RBI and a sacrifice to his credit today. Right-handed hitting senior. Hitting the count, two balls and one strike. Cut on a missed. Count is even now, two balls and two strikes. Alex Franklin has a couple of RBIs to his credit. Don't let me call him Alex Wood. For whatever reason, I called him that yesterday, all day. Pitch, breaking pitch, that's high. And the count is full, three balls and two strikes. Good looking pitch, but a little bit high. And the count is three and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the sixth inning from Halls. In a 4-1 ball game with the Wildcats on top. Here's the pitch. In the air softly, weakly. Third baseman tries to catch it. It drops in, and it's going to be a single, unless it was foul. Yeah. Let's see what they call. It is going to be a foul ball. So just barely, and a smart move. The pitcher and the third baseman came together. It fell, and instead of grabbing it, which would be the natural tendency, you would think. They let it drop in, and it drops foul, and no harm done. And once again, Cam will have a three-ball, two-strike count. We've been beginning to pick up a little bit. Some of the fans falling out of halls, not because it's raining, I hope. Here's the pitch, 3-2 pitch. That's ball four. So Wildcats have a base runner once again. They have had base runners in just about every inning. I think every inning, to be honest with you, as Kyron steps in, or Alex steps in, he, like I mentioned, he has a couple of RBIs to his credit, both on sacrifice flies, and now we're gonna have a mound visit. We're live on our YouTube channel. We appreciate all of you watching. As I point out many times, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see the advertisements flashing around. Those are our basketball and football uh, advertisers that uh, advertise primarily on the radio. We actually don't actually solicit sponsors for our YouTube channel. There are radio sponsors which we bonus to the to the YouTube uh, broadcasts. And like we said, we don't have any baseball sponsors. It's, baseball is unfortunately, although Ethan and I love baseball. <laughs> um, uh, baseball is just not a big sport, a uh, high school sport anyway. I mean, at the higher levels it is. Obviously, UT's having a great season. But at the high school level, it's hard to, it's hard to garnish, you know, get money. And, but I can tell you, as we get, get closer to the postseason, uh, when those games are actually – we have to pay the TSSAA to broadcast those ball games. And we know we have a lot of grandparents and, and fans and aunts and uncles and people from outside the area – they like watching our broadcast. Maybe the only time they get to see their their uh, grandchildren play. We will be probably asking for some money. It's Wildcats bunt, and Alex Franklin, who normally is what you would call a great bunter, that time fouls it over the top of us, and the count is 0-1. Under the bleachers again. Wildcats were running on the play anyway. Coach Free, once again, will look at his armband, and he'll call a new play. Alex officially no at plate appearances. He has two sacrifice flies and two RBIs in this one. Kai takes his lead off of first. He squares the bunt. He bunts it foul again. Off to the right. I kind of filled his head up, I guess, because I was telling him and his mother, too, what a great bunter he was. And he is a great bunter. He is a great bunter. Don't take me wrong. But he's fouled off the last two. And now let's see. Now it looks like um, Coach Free wants to talk it over with Kai. 
And he's going to come over to the sidelines, and we're going to have a pinch runner, not a courtesy runner. It's going to be a pinch runner for the third baseman, Kai Welch. Let's see if he's okay. I think he is. I, don't, I didn't see anything. Maybe he just wanted to get a little bit more speed in the ball game. And it's going to be Izzy Mitchell. Izzy's got a stolen base to his credit today as they, the umpire changes the, the scorebook just a bit, a little card that he keeps to make sure that the proper people enter and re-enter and the order is followed properly. He's replaced and Izzy will be the base runner. But Alex Franklin, the number nine hitter in the lineup, finds himself in the hole with a no ball, two strike count on him. Big Al Frank, that's a new name for him. It's better than Alex Wood, whatever I called him yesterday. Good lead at first. The pitch hit on the ground over the pitcher's head. It's going to be a bang, bang play, and it's going to be an infield single. Once it ticked off the pitcher's glove, it was going to be a hit. Nobody, the shortstop or the second baseman, had any opportunity to get to the ball, and that is an infield single for Alex Franklin. And he tried to bunt, but he picks up an infield single and the Wildcats have runners at first and second with nobody out and back to the top of the order we go to Parker free. Parker is one for three in the ball game with a single. Wildcats trying to get that run back and they're going to as that ball is ripped to right field. Maybe not as the stop sign is given. It's a really great arm by the right fielder. I mean, I'm telling you. Kai, actually Izzy, or whoever the runner is, I think it's Izzy, would have been dead to rights if he had tried to run on that one. That ball was ripped to right field. Second hit of the game for Parker Free, and the Wildcats have the bases loaded with nobody out, and Mikey Teasley is the batter. Mikey, a single, a double, and a walk to his credit. And now, once again, we're gonna have a mound visit, and we might have a pitching change. Bases full of Wildcats as they bat in the top of the sixth inning in a four to one ball game. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge in the lead. And while this conversation takes place, I hesitate to take a break once again. I'm afraid as I take a, a break, they will, they will not change pitchers, but the conversation goes on. Wildcats get a shot of that right there. That's a nice little shot there of, of the Wildcats huddling on their dugout side. And those grandparents might get a chance, chance to see some of their, their family members up close as the Wildcats will return to the bases and they will remain loaded. The Wildcats have out hit the Red Devils 12 to three. Wildcats lead the ball game by a score of four to one and Mikey trying to give the Wildcats a little bit more breathing room as we head to the later to last two innings of the ball game. Here's the pitch to Mikey. It bounces away back to the screen, but Lithgow's pretty good about bouncing around back there, and he goes back and retrieves it. You don't want to have your first out thrown out at the plate, and very wisely the Wildcats stay put at first. One ball, no strikes the count. Teasley, as I mentioned, he is two for two in the ball game with a walk. Runners, they take their lead, the pitch to him. That's another ball, and this time he is gonna score without a throw. Ball got between his legs, and Izzy Mitchell comes in to score the run, and the Wildcats get that run back, and the other runners move up to second and third. So Izzy comes in to score a run, and it's now five to one, Oak Ridge. And Mikey Teasley with runners at second and third. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch, bounces away again. Here comes another run as the Wildcats score on another wild pitch in to score this run, Alex Franklin. And the Wildcats now lead it by a score of six to one. Lethko's doing all he could to try to block the pitches down in the dirt. As the Wildcats now have a runner at third, the pitch. That is ball four. So Mikey walks for the second time, and I'm sure that's going to be the end of the day for the Hall's Red Devil pitcher. Just couldn't control it here this inning. 
The Wildcats loaded the bases, and they have scored two times to take a 6-1 to one lead, and we're about to have a pitching change. We're live here at Halls. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge in the lead over the Red Devils in this district ball game, 6-1. to one. We'll be back with this pitching change in a moment. Welcome back once again to Halls. The Red Devils making a pitching change. Wildcats have put two insurance runs on the board to take a 6-1 to one lead in this district ball game. The Wildcats trying to sweep the Red Devils. Oak Ridge beat Halls last night 8-4 to four at Bobby Hopkins. Peyton Witter will be the batter. Oak Ridge has runners at first and third. There's still nobody out in the sixth inning in a six to one ball game and Peyton will stand in. Let's see what Peyton has a single to his credit. He's one for three in the ball game. Runners on the corners. A couple wild pitches were the end of the day for the Red Devil pitcher allowing two runs to score in this inning. The Wildcats hoping for more. Like I said, they have, have them on the corners with a one ball no strike count on the number three hitter in the lineup, Peyton Witter. Down the ground over towards the Oak Ridge dugout. And evidently, either somebody made a great play. I think it might have been Coach Ben Peters who makes the play and slings it back into play. Good job, Ben, former Wildcat, former Maryville Scott. One of the best hitters I ever saw at Oak Ridge, to be honest with you. He could really hit the ball. 1-1 one, one pitch, runner going. No throw. That'll be a stolen base for the Wildcats. Mikey Teasley as he goes in without a throw. They were concerned about the runner at third for the Wildcats, who is taking his lead off of the bag. Pitch, hit, in the hole. That's a base hit and an RBI. Rounding third and getting the stoplight is Mikey Teasley in the score. The run is Parker Free, and the Wildcats now lead it by a score of 7-1. to one. That is an RBI single. Second hit of the ball game for Peyton. First RBI of the game. And the batter now will be Camden Welch. It's now 7-1 to one Oak Ridge on top of the Red Devils. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning. Wildcats once again have them on the corners for Camden Welch. Camden has two hits in the ball game, two singles, two hard hit singles. Takes one outside, and the count is 1-0. and oh. He also flew out to center field. 7-1 our score, Oak Ridge. Mikey Teasley, the runner at third. Pitch bounces away and comes back our way. <laughs> and both of us kind of moved on that one, even though we know there's a fence there. We know there's a net there, but both of us kind of backed up. It was coming right at us. <laughs> it was. It was directly. And I kind of laugh at people who do that, but, hey, I'm one of them now. Yep. At least we didn't duck under the bleachers. Like Caleb. <laughs> exactly. Pitch is way outside again. Three balls and no strikes. 
the relief man is no relief for the Red Devils to this point. He falls behind Cam Welch. Sai's on deck. Sai had a double and scored a run his last time. There's ball four, not even close. And Camden Welch walks. So he's been on base three times for the Wildcats. And once again, for the second time in this inning, the Wildcats have loaded the bases. And here's Cy Stevens. The Wildcats are going to get another runner. That's going to be Cam Britton once again. He'll be running for Cam. 7-1 Wildcats. Oak Ridge hoping for more. Cy hit a home run yesterday, a three-run shot, a grand slam right here. We'll put the run rule in effect. As that pitch is down low, a ball, one ball and no strikes. Cy has a double and scored a run in the ball game. Those uh, very bright shoes that he wears, you can see. I guess they're kind of a pinkish color. Pit, pitch is hit deep to left center field. The center fielder over, makes the catch, and in the score will come another Wildcat. Oak Ridge scores on the sacrifice fly. This time it's Mikey Teasley in the score, and the Wildcats now lead it by a score of 8-1. to one. That is an RBI for Cy on a sacrifice fly, and the Wildcat lead is 8-1. to one. The other runners had to stay put on their respective bases, and the batter now will be Richie Ferreira. Richie has two hits and an RBI and a run scored in this one. And he takes a strike, and the count is 0-1. It's finally an out in the sixth. The Wildcats have increased their lead to 8-1. To Pitch to Richie, hit foul. Off towards the backstop on the first base side, and he's behind in the count, no balls and two sti strikes. Richie, as I mentioned, a couple hits in this ball game, two singles, an RBI, and a run scored. Wildcats with a runner out at second. The pitch, that's a ball. And the count is one and two. Wildcats trying to sweep the Red Devils this season. I can tell you, the Halls has had a great tradition of baseball. You can look at it, there's a little plaque on their concession stand to our right with all their district championships, region tournaments, and states. Pitches hit foul once again back to the screen. That time, I knew there was a net. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that's good. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Richie will be followed by Warren East in the Oak Ridge lineup. Runners at first and second. One two pitch. Breaking pitch stays high and outside. Two balls and two strikes. Wildcats have put four on the board. The Wildcats have scored in three consecutive innings after scoring two in the second. Richie back in the pitch to him. Hit foul. Off to the left side, heading towards a big truck, and no, didn't get it. What a shame. <laughs> Ethan's a man of many words. Two balls, two strikes. Cam Britton takes his lead off of the back there. The base hit to center field, and the Wildcats are going to have the bases loaded once again. Here comes the throw to 30, throws it away, but not – and it's going to go into the dugout, which is going to allow another run to score. It goes into the dugout, and another run scores. The Wildcats score, and in to score that run for the Wildcats is Peyton Witter. And the Wildcats now lead it 9-1, to one. and that is the third hit of the ball game for Richie Ferreira. So Peyton scores his second run of the ball game. Richie has a single. And an RBI, his second RBI of the ball game. And the Wildcats now have runners at second and third. And the batter will be Warren East. Warren has walked twice, scored two times, and has a stolen base to his credit. Is that an error for them? It is an error. Yes, it is. Allowing the runners to advance and the runner to score. Center fielder just kind of airmailed it. And I, we're kind of screened from where it went. It either went between the fence, in the dugout, someplace. And now the field umpire is talking with somebody. And evidently somebody in the Oak Ridge dugout was warned about something. And 
Coach Free just kind of waves him off and turns his back and walks away. 9-1 Wildcats has been a really very productive inning. Five runs on the board. The Wildcats have out hit them 14-3 in this one. That pitch is down low, a ball, one ball, no strikes. So Mitchell Warren has walked a couple times. He scored a couple runs. Pitch to him, hit on the ground. Another base hit with the infield in. Here comes two more runs. Here comes the throw from left field. It is a two RBI single as Richie Ferreira, Camden Britton come in to score and the Wildcats have that 10 run lead late in the ball game. Warren East, two RBIs, his first hit of the series and the Wildcats are up 10 runs, 11 to one the score and this sixth inning continues as the Wildcats have already put seven on the board. The batter now for Oak Ridge will be Kyron Welch. Kai walked, I believe, to start this inning. The Wildcats have batted around. Pitch, there's a called strike, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. 11 to one Wildcats, Oak Ridge is out, hit them 15 to three. Pitch, good stop by Lethko. Keeping it around the home plate area, and the count is two and one. Kyle will be followed by Alex Franklin. He had a single and scored a run this inning. Wildcats have put seven on the board this inning. They've batted around. Kai, as I mentioned, he walked the last time. Has a single to his credit, a sacrifice, and an RBI as well. Takes a strike, and it's two and two. Are you awake? Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at first. Warren East, and timeout is asked for. Red Devils defeated Oak Ridge in the junior varsity game today. Lithgow takes a little bit of a break behind the play. I don't know how these catchers do it in back-to-back -back games. It's not super hot right now. It's very comfortable, actually, as that pitch is cut on a missed, and Kai goes down swinging for the second out of the inning. A little nice applause from the Halls fans to our right. And the batter will be Alex Franklin. Alex has two RBIs in the ball game, two sacrifice flies. He has a single and has scored a run. Throw over to first and back to the bag will go the freshman Warren East. Warren a big two RBI single just a moment ago to give Oak Ridge the 10 run lead. Wildcats need three outs to win the ball game. Pitch, hit in the air, center field, should be caught by the center fielder. He is under it, makes the one-handed grab, and finally the bottom or the top of the sixth inning comes to a close. So we have played five and a half innings here at Halls. The Wildcats lead the Red Devils 11 to 1. Remember, we'll have the postgame after the game with player interviews. Stay tuned for that. We're going to turn off the mic because the music is playing. 11-1 Wildcats, we'll be back in a moment.
The Wildcats have made a pitching change. Peyton Witter comes into the ball game for Camden Welch, who leaves with eight strikeouts, gave up only three hits, and walked a couple. And Peyton takes over on the mound. Has been really good in relief for the Wildcats this year. Pitched really well up in Kingsport the other night. And the first pitch is a strike. Second pitch is a ball, one ball, one strike. So the Wildcats have a 10 run lead at 11 to one. So Peyton trying to end it right here with three outs with the run rule. Left go is the batter and he calls timeout. It'll be the two, well, actually the three, four, and five hitters in the lineup. Left go, Perry, and the ball is hit on the ground. That's a base hit in the left field. So they have their leadoff man aboard, a solid single by the catcher. And that is Lethko, and the batter now will be Seth Perry. Perry is 0 for 2 in the ball game with a couple of strikeouts. Ball's hit in the air to left field. Cy Stevens makes the grab, and that is out number one here in the sixth inning. One pitch, one out, so Peyton retires the second man he faces. And the batter now will be the shortstop, Camden Wells. Wells walked and struck out in this one. And the first pitch is a strike. <laughs> that pitch is out of the strike zone. And the count is one ball and one strike. Batter now is Landon Wells. As I mentioned, he is 0 for 1 with a walk. Throw over to first. Let me make it one combo every cheek and top. Uh, yes. On deck is Cash Centel. He struck out twice in the ball game. Pitch stays a little high, and the count is two balls and one strike. Cut on a missed, and the count is even now at two balls and two strikes. The Wildcats on top 11 to 1 here in the sixth inning. We'll have the post game. Stay tuned. We'll have some player interviews for you. Runner at first, that's left go. He's the catcher, draws the throw from Witter. Camden is now playing first base. So the first baseman switched positions. Cam now playing first, Peyton now pitching. Let's see, the rest of the infield looks the same. Peyton comes to the plate, hit in the air softly to the second baseman, and I believe that is Carson Fagan who makes the play for out number two. So the Red Devils down to their last out here from Halls, and the batter is going to be Cash Centel. Cash 0 for 2 in the ball game with a couple of strikeouts. Music plays as Peyton tries to nail it down. Not really probably a save opportunity when you're up by 10, but it's an important just to finish off the Red Devils and get another district win. There's a pretty breaking pitch there for Peyton, and he's ahead in the count. No balls in one strike. Runner first. They've got a courtesy runner in now. Took the catcher out. One strike pitch. Cut on a miss, way behind that fastball, and the count is 0-2, so the Red Devils down to their final strike. The Wildcats will sweep the Red Devils this, this season as, once again, Centel 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, steps back in against the left-handed throwing Peyton Witter. The pitch, that's up high. 
Parker went up and got it, and the count is one and two. Because Free will be joining us after the ball game. There's Ethan speeding away in the background. One ball, two strikes. Checking the runner at first, the one-two pitch. Hits the bat and rolls foul. Just kind of took an excuse me swing, stuck the bat out there and just made a little contact around the hands. And the count remains at one ball and two strikes. We'll have the totals after the game. We'll have the post game as well. It's going to be a later night. We started this game at 7.15, a late start. Hall's decided to go late with it. One ball, two strikes. Peyton Witter comes to the plate. There's the ball game. Oak Ridge wins. Peyton Witter gets the strikeout, and that is out number three here in the sixth inning, and the Wildcats have swept the Hall's Red Devils. They have swept the Carnes Beavers. They have swept the Campbell County Cougars. They have split with the Central Bobcats. They're down one game to Powell, but they'll play them on Monday, and if the Wildcats can win that ball game, the Wildcats will be the regular season district three champions. That's a big if, perhaps, depending on what Central and Powell do. There's a lot to be involved there, but that is the possibility. The Wildcats win it by a final score of 11 to one. The two teams shaking hands. We'll have the post game show for you. Stay tuned for that. We're on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. My name is David Clary, along with Ethan Eubanks. What's Peyton Campbell, is that his last name? What's his, Peyton Campbell. He, he's not really part of the crew, but yeah, I gave him a little shout out as well. He's. He's a good guy. He's helped us out before. Let me run down some of the totals in the ball game. We'll go from the top of the lineup down. Parker Free in the game had a couple of base hits and scored a run for the Wildcats. Mikey Teasley had another perfect day. He had a single. He had a double. He walked twice, stole a base, and scored a run. Izzy Mitchell had a stolen base and scored a run. Peyton Witter had a single, actually two singles, Scored two runs and knocked in a run. Camden Welch also with a big day. About everybody played well for the Wildcats. Cam Welch had two singles and walked. Uh, Cam Britton was his runner. He scored a run in the ballgame. Cy Stevens had a double and a sacrifice. Scored a run and had an RBI. Richie Ferreira had three base hits in the ballgame. Three singles. He had, let's see, a couple RBIs, and he scored a run for the Wildcats. Warren East also walked twice, solo base, scored three runs in the game, and knocked in two for the Wildcats. Kyron Welch had a sacrifice and an RBI on a bunt. He went through great base running by Richie Ferreira on that one. Richie also, actually Kyron uh, Welch had a, a single. He walked, and he was out in the last inning. Alex Franklin, a sacrifice fly and an RBI in the first. A sacrifice fly and an RBI, his next plate appearance, so two RBIs. He also had a single and he scored a run and the Wildcats win the ball game. Winning pitcher in the game was Camden Welch. He struck out eight, allowed only three hits and walked only two. The losing pitcher in the ball game was Dade Young for the Halls Red Devils. The Wildcats are out in the field, and we'll get the post game for you here in a second. The music is still playing, so I should probably turn off the microphone. I got three warnings in the ball game yesterday from YouTube of copyrighted music that Coach James Branson played. Final score of the ball game here at Halls. The Wildcats win it by a score of 11 to 1. Stay tuned for the post game show. Our post game interviews, whoever Coach Free elects to bring our way, we'll be talking to them in a moment. We'll be back to Halls in a moment.
We're still waiting for our post-game show. I don't know who will be coming over to speak to us. The coaches are still talking, and I don't see any players actually making their way towards me right away. We will speak to the head coach of the Wildcats, Coach Travis Free, if we don't get a chance to play with any players. The players are heading it out. It is kind of a later day. It is about 9.30 right now as we wait for our first player interview. I hope we have some. They did such a good job yesterday. I could interview Tri Sharp, but he hadn't played in a while. We could kind of find out what's going on with his uh, knee. He had a partial tear, and hopefully uh, he'll be back pretty soon. As we wait, looks maybe it's going to be Richie. I don't know. Might be Richie Ferreira. Let's see if Richie's going to come our way. Let's see if he's coming. Be nice to talk to Richie Ferreira on the air. Let's get Richie on the air. Let's let Ethan set him up here. Richie, I don't know if you were the scheduled guy, but it's always good to talk to you. Let's get the camera on you. And eh, you're a little backlit, but it'll be okay. Um, Richie, first off, congratulations on the win. Thank you, David. Uh, you have swept. The Red Devils, which is important. I think you're now seven and two in the district. Very How important big was sweep. it for you to get this sweep? Very, very, very big sweep for us. Very important team win. Uh, we needed the, we needed these two wins for. Uh, we needed these two wins. It gives us a better place. Hope we're hoping for a three-way tie, but I think Central won tonight. So we needed these two wins to get a second seed, second seed, and we play at Central. I think this was your best ball game offensively since the Clinton ball game, I believe. You had three hits today. One of them will go down as a line drive in the book, that little flare, I guess we'll call it, to uh, to left. But you had uh, three hits in the game. Talk about your your night's work. Well, those three hits really came. Three hits came because my rich, team. Rich, 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 rich. 
the three hits came because my teammates, you know, they've been they've been real supportive of the journey. I've had a very up and down year, and today I really felt I felt it in the box. And knowing that I have a dugout full of teammates supporting me, and knowing that we had to win a big game, I knew that I was going to come through. You know, Cam was on his game once again. I think uh, there was a stretch, almost like Mikey last night, where he struck out like eight in a row. Uh, Cam Camden had a really good stretch. I think he ended up with eight strikeouts, and then Peyton came in. It's always good to, good to get that run rule. I mean, you kind of put them away, and that that inning was just huge for you guys. It's always great to you know put up ten in an inning and just go go home go home with a big win. And I mean, it looks better it looks better for us, but we know that it was only one inning that we're not to keep the bat hot for the rest of the game. Hey, Richie, we haven't seen you pitch in about a month. Are we ever going to see you back on the mound? I, I don't know. You guys are going to have to wait for that, and you might see me secretly come out of the vault, but we're saving it for, you know, like state championship when I pitch in the game, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I don't think I'll pitch another game this season. You got one more district game to go. That is Monday against Powell, and how important is that game going to be? The Powell game is going to be the biggest game of the season. I think everybody should tune in to watch that. Uh, we need that game to solidify a second seed in the district and maybe even a one seed with the luck of the draw. Richie, congratulations on the win, and, and uh, good luck on Thursday, I guess, uh, against Bearden. Thursday at Bearden. Yes, thanks a lot, Richie. That's Richie Ferreira, junior right fielder. Uh, let's see if we're going to get anybody else to come our way. Let's see. I don't see anybody. Maybe Parker is heading this way. Haven't gotten a chance to park, talk to Parker Free yet. Let's see if he's coming. I don't know if Peyton's going to come. I haven't talked to him in a while. Kind of challenged him. Let's see who's coming. Peyton, you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it came true. Right here? We'll get it. Yeah, you're okay. good right there. You're Wait, did you just call me Bubba? What's that? Did you just call me Bubba? Nope. I just said, good shot. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, first off, uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, you got a chance to, to hit. Let's see what you did today. You you uh, well, team scored 11 runs. Talk about that first off. Um, I think it's mainly there's been a uh, little like uh, sprinkles of it throughout the season to where when we come together, it's kind of hard to stop us, and that's just another example of it. So hopefully we can just continue to string hits together over and over again and stay hot. You had a multi-hit ball game, knocked in a run, got a chance to pitch. And I, I was asking uh, Richie just a moment ago, how important was this win to sweep the Red Devils? Yeah, um, uh, of course, if we um, beat Powell, you know, the goal is to win out, then the, we will get the one in the district and puts us in a great place for the district tournament. So that's the main goal right now. You haven't pitched. Well, you pitched a little bit, I guess, on Friday. Was that Friday when the last time uh, you yeah. pitched? You, you were the guy on the mound to close it out. Obviously, talk about that. Um, mainly, I was just, you know, to come in there and get the job done. It was nice to have a couple of days off finally, so enjoyed that. So. Okay, I've been wanting to ask you this probably all month. You bat from the right side, you throw from the left side. What made you decide to be a right-handed hitter? Um, apparently, when I was younger, uh, my dad would try to put me on the left side, and I'd cry until I'd hit on the right <laughs> side. And so, but I could only throw lefty. So. Okay, you've played a lot of DH as of late. When Camden pitches, you get to play first. Obviously, uh, you like the DH role. Is it harder for you, or do you like to be in the field? Um, at the beginning, it was harder for me because it's like, you know, sitting there getting cold on the bench, and I got to go in there and hit. But I've done a better job of being able to get up there after sitting there for a couple innings and still have managed to get it done. How's your junior year been for you as, as an individual? Um, it's, it's been great. I was glad I finally got to, you know, I think the move was a big, good decision for me, and I'm enjoying it here, so. So you got Bearden, I think, on Thursday, and then really next week, Monday, is the big game. Yeah. You, you mentioned that. That's yeah. against Powell. Powell's a good team. Hopefully it won't rain. You know that field. <laughs> it, it just it floods. But uh, what do you know or what can you remind us about, about Powell? Um, main thing I noticed just from watching them is uh, they, don't, they don't strike out much. And so it's mainly just we've got to make the uh, plays in the field and then support our team on offense. So, Peyton, I appreciate the mm -hmm. time, and good, good luck um, Thursday against Bearden. Okay. Thank you. It's Peyton Witter. Let's see if Coach Free is going to join us here. I don't know where he is. Looking for Coach Free. Don't see him. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk to him. Has he forgotten, or will he be joining us for the post-game interview? I know Ethan wants to head home, but uh, we'll see. I don't see him getting a little closer, and we're about to talk to him and close it out. He had a long conversation out on the field. Let's get cut. Yeah, that's okay. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm ready to go home. It's, it's only 9.30, Coach. Oh, it just 9 yeah, just a little past. 
Well, let's uh, let's get uh, a little bit. Our mouth there is good. That's not. You're a little backlit, but that's okay, I guess. Let me go this way. I, I don't think. It, well, you know, actually, th that way is better. Go a little farther that way. Yeah. Okay. That's the head coach of the Wildcats, Coach Travis Free. Coach, uh, you and I talked about this last night, and I just talked to some of the guys here. It was important to get this this win tonight to sweep the Red Devils and go. I guess it's seven and two now in the district. Yep. Talk about how important it was. Uh, well, I'm, most important thing is we're starting to play better. Is what I'm really, really what the message to our team is: is we got to play better, we got to keep getting better. And today, I felt like might have been one of our most complete games of the year, like all phases. Cam was it was great offensively in all areas, no matter what we did. We were better, we scored, and then we were able to get big hits and big moments. And I think, I mean, it's, to me, we just got to play our best. It's going to come down to the district. It's going to come down to a game here and there, and we're going to have to just be playing our best. And right now, that's the message to our team every single day. Like, let's just play better. Let's just be better. Let's get better. I know you have some games in between, at least the Bearden game on Monday, but uh, the guys that I talked to are kind of focusing in on that Monday ball game, which is a huge one for your team against Pal. I know as coaches, you take them one at a time, but the guys are will be focused, I'm sure, yeah. Thursday against Bearden, but that Monday game is going to be a huge one. Yeah, huge, huge matchup for us so once again. And, like, I challenge our team. Like, like, it's time to go. Like, there's no more up and down. There's no more – you know, play good two days, take a day off, and you're just not playing very well. Today it's about, you know, we've got to play our best day in and day out, and I thought today was the first step. We had a chance right there. You know, we had a chance to make that game tight. It was 4-1. You know, we got to two outs. They had their best hitter up. They had a chance to go double right there. It's 4-3, but then we got out of the jam by a good play by Kyron. We came back in, and then we poured it on with seven runs. So, I mean, that – you know, you kind of take a punch and you kind of gather yourself, but then you go right back and, and punch back. So, I, to me, that says that we're just getting better and we're, we're starting to put it together. Coach, in the games that I've seen, I thought that was probably Camden's best pitching performance, especially against a district opponent. It's not even close. It's not even close. And that's the way Cam has been his whole life. The, the warmer the weather gets, the later in the year goes, he just keeps turning it up a notch. I mean, you know, today he was he, he hit 86 multiple times a day, which is a PR for him. I mean, he usually is in the 83 to 84 range. He was hitting 86 plus tonight. Like he's starting to feel it, and then he was just able to kind of fill up the zone. Man, he was just he was good. I don't know how many strikeouts he had today, but he was pretty good eight. there for a while. Eight. eight, yeah. So he had eight. So it was just really, really, really strong performance out of him. Three hits and only one walk, I believe, in That's the right, game. Yeah. So. And with the zone that was really, really tight tonight. Like right. really, and his and he was he was tight everywhere. I'm not talking about the umpire, but I mean his zone was really, really tight. Like almost a big league zone. It wasn't expanding a ball off either side. It had to be on the plate, and with one walk. With that zone, that's pretty impressive. Too. I thought the umpire was actually very good behind the plate. It was very consistent. No, very consistent, very consistent yeah, the that, whole that, game. That's all you asked for. Like, right? right. And his zone was tight. You had to get it in that box. It was tight both ways, right? And that's what we told our team. Don't chase above the belt. He's not going to give it to you. And Cam was really, really strong today. Really, I mean, uh, incredible, incredible good. Coach, I know it's late. Just your final comments on the win. A huge win for us. But number one, just we're playing better. Like, we've got to get it rolling, and we've got to continue to play at a high level. And offensively, today was by far our strongest performance in a long, long time for sure. Coach, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for being here. Wildcats win it 11-1. to That is your final score. That about does it here from Halls. Most of the people have exited the stadium here. Wildcats win it 11 to 1 over the Red Devils. The Wildcats are now 7 and 2 in district play. They sweep the Red Devils winning 8 to 4 yesterday. For Ethan Eubanks, this is David Clary saying until our show tomorrow at 7 o'clock. This is David Clary saying so long, everybody.